Yes, she offered me money. But she offered me something more important. Something you wouldn't understand. Freedom! Even if it has been a while since you've watched the episode he starred in, you probably remember Sergeant Slick, Star Wars The Clone Wars' first clone traitor. For many of us, watching the episode he featured in, The Hidden Enemy, was the first time we'd really thought critically about the clone's condition. Of course, it's also a fair bet that most of us didn't dwell on it long, much like the episode itself. At the end of the day, Slick was against the Republic, and the Republic was on the good side, right? Well, we've discussed before how that's not quite true, and with that in mind, perhaps it's time to pay closer attention to our boy Slick. Was he really just a traitor, or was he in the right? Attention, Sergeant on deck! Star Wars The Clone Wars taught us a lot of lessons, but in our humble opinion, one of the most important was that authority is never absolute or unquestionable. Through Anakin Skywalker's many exploits, we saw that sometimes disobeying the Jedi Council was the right move. Through Ahsoka Tano's expulsion and trial, we saw that sometimes even the law could be wrong. Above all, through Captain Rex's refusal to execute Order 66, we saw that, sometimes, the good soldiers were the ones who didn't follow orders. The ones who committed treason because it was the right thing to do. Without a doubt, Sergeant Slick was a traitor, but as we saw with Rex, sometimes traitor is just another word for hero, even if that can be a tough pill to swallow. To be more specific, treason against the Galactic Republic wasn't necessarily a bad thing either. As we've discussed in many past videos, neither the Republic nor the Confederacy of Independent Systems had the right to be considered the good guys of the Clone Wars as both were downright abominable in their own ways. Even if the Republic wasn't the Empire yet, it practiced many of the evils the Empire would come to be known for, so treason against it could be a valid moral choice in some situations. But was Slick's case one of those situations? First, let's take a look at what exactly Slick did and why. Simply put, Slick coordinated with Asajj Ventress to sabotage the Republic war effort on Christosis. He sent her information that allowed Separatist forces to win crucial engagements and after being outed as a traitor, he blew up the Republic's armory. This destroyed most of the 501st Legion's ATTEs and other heavy equipment, severely hamstringing Republic forces in later stages of the battle. He was also planning to run off and join the Separatists when he was apprehended by Commander Cody and Captain Rex. When confronted, Slick said that he did what he did because Ventress had offered him something the other clones wouldn't understand, freedom. He believed that the Grand Army of the Republic was held in a state of slavery by the Jedi and the Republic, and he hated his superiors for it. His treason was a sort of personal rebellion against the Republic that sent him and his brothers to die without a second thought. Slick did what he did, he claimed, for the sake of all clones, as he apparently believed that the Confederacy, if victorious, would treat the clones better than the Republic did. Slick claimed to have loved his brothers, though he also had a degree of resentment for the other clones due to how blindly they followed orders. Now, let's take a look at whether all of this was right or wrong, starting with the arguments for Slick being in the wrong. The episode itself seemingly promotes the idea that Slick's stated motives were mostly rationalization and that he was really just out for himself. He even admits that Ventress offered him money to betray the Republic and he seemingly didn't even try to bring any of the other clones with him when he abandoned the GAR. This is how Cody and Rex explained Slick's behavior. As the argument goes, Slick's motives were primarily selfish. As Rex put it, he believed that Slick just sold his brothers out for some real shiny coin and that all of Slick's talk about freedom and slavery was just rationalization. There's evidence to support this too. Slick's attempted solo exit was perhaps the biggest piece of evidence for the Slick skeptic crowd. He tried to run off to the Separatist camp alone, leaving the brothers he apparently cared so much about to die. That doesn't really sound like something a freedom fighter would do. Perhaps the strongest point against Slick being in the right was the one Cody brought up at the end of the episode. If Slick cared so much about the other clones, then why did he put them at risk? 
Most freedom fighters in Slick's situation would have tried to start a mutiny or a mass revolt against the Republic. But that's not what Slick did. Instead, he just colluded with the Republic's enemies, something that seems like cheap revenge at best and a betrayal of all the other clones at worst. At least in the short term, nothing Slick did benefited the other clones. On the contrary, according to Cody, Slick's actions actively put the other clones at risk. By handing over tactical data to the Separatists, all he really did was get more clones killed. I mean, he even blew up part of the Republic military base on Christosis. You know, the place his brothers were currently living in. As Rex and Cody reasoned, if Slick had the clone's best interests in mind, he had a really odd way of showing it. So that settles it. Slick was in the wrong, right? Well, not so fast. Cody's reasoning was a bit faulty. Slick's actions weren't what put the other clones at risk. The blame for that belongs to the Republic. If the Republic hadn't forced the clones to fight for it, they wouldn't have been risking their lives on Christosis in the first place. To use an analogy, the Republic sent the clones into a burning forest while Slick just led them closer to the flames. Sure, his actions probably got more of them killed, but that's just in the short run, and even then, it could be argued that the Republic was really at fault for that. If Slick was being honest about his motives, then he probably believed that a Republic defeat on Christosis would ultimately save clone lives in the long run. We'll discuss how this might have been the case in a bit. Furthermore, there's actually evidence that Slick did try to minimize risk to his clone brothers. When he blew up the armory at the Republic military base, there were, as far as we know, no casualties. At most, Slick was trying to kill Rex and Cody while also fulfilling his main objective of blowing up the Republic's heavy weapons. But here's something to consider. If Slick was just trying to hurt the Republic so Ventress would pay him, then why did he go for the armory? He would have done more damage by planting a bomb in the mess hall and killing all the clones present or hitting a reactor and blowing up more of the base. But Slick explicitly chose to attack the armory, limiting the effectiveness of the attack while also ensuring that it killed as few clones as possible. Obviously, we don't know whether or not this was on purpose, but we think it's likely. The attack on the armory proves that Slick's goal wasn't to kill clones, but to cause the Republic to lose the Battle of Christosis. There are a few reasons why he, if he had the clone's best interests at heart, could have wanted this. Firstly, he might have believed that, if he jumped ship to the Separatists, he could arrange for any clones captured in the inevitable CIS victory to be set free. Secondly, he could have been thinking on a much larger scale and hoping that Christosis could help the CIS win the Clone Wars. Slick may well have hoped that the CIS would set all of the surviving clones free if it won the Clone Wars. We doubt it, but since Slick didn't really have our perspective on how truly evil the CIS was, it's possible he believed it. Lastly, let's discuss the elephant in the room. We can go back and forth about what Slick's motives were and weren't all day, but there's one undeniable fact about this whole affair. The clones were indeed slaves. The entire Grand Army of the Republic, legally speaking, was the fully owned property of the Galactic Republic with no rights and little freedom to speak of. Even if Slick's motives weren't as pure as he claimed, his analysis of what the Republic was doing to his brothers was spot on. Let's put it this way, does it really matter why a slave rebels, when the fact is they're a slave that unquestionably deserves freedom? Even if Slick was exclusively fighting for himself, didn't he have the right to do so? Since this is a question of morality, there's ultimately no right or wrong answer. We've come to believe that Slick did absolutely nothing wrong, but you're perfectly welcome to disagree with that assessment. If you do, feel free to write all about your stance in the comments below. But before you do, consider one last question. The Clone Wars presents the unquestioningly loyal Commander Cody as having the moral high ground over the traitorous Slick. But if you were a Jedi during Order 66, which of those two clones would you rather have on your side? Anyways guys, as always thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.